Hi guys, welcome along, Lucas Rogers. And here we are just at the start of uh, the year 2021. And I th I'm sure most people will agree we're pretty glad to get 2020 out of the way and, uh, and that one behind us. But strangely enough, 2020 was actually a, uh, a very good year for property. It's been a very strange last 12 months, I have to say that. And I think it's taken a lot of people by surprise as to what's happening both with the economy and also in the property market as well. This time last year, uh, well, I suppose a little bit later than that, maybe February to March last year, it was certainly trying times for everybody. The virus had really only just come out and we didn't really know the full extent of the damage that that was going to do. There was a little bit of early job loss um, back in the start of 2020. And I really think that that affected people's capacity to think straight. I mean, there was mass hordes of, of toilet paper buying and, and grocery buying. Um, and I think most people were nervous about what was gonna happen for the rest of the year. Funnily enough, the, the, um, the year 2020 turned out to be quite a good one, to be quite honest. Uh, from a, an economic, economics perspective, I think that Scott Morrison and the federal government did an excellent job of maintaining the damage um, from the COVID virus. Uh, their government support, um, the grants that were available were certainly adequate. And in fact, I think in a lot of sense, it was more than adequate. And I think a few people took advantage of that. For many people, and I speak to people every day about how their business is going, jobs are going and so forth. For many people, 2020 was one of their best years on record financially. Um, anybody to do with things like landscaping, building, um, you know, a lot of the trades have just had a real bumper year. And I think that that's a case of, from that perspective, I think a lot of people are spending a lot more time at home, they're not going away, they're spending less money going out, restauranting and drinking and so forth, and therefore they've put a little bit more time and effort into their own homes. So landscapers, um, you know, any civil works, etc., has been top priority for a lot of people. And it's been very, very hard to get tradesmen over the last, uh, last 12 months. And so I think with people putting money into their own home, taking up those trades, you're going to see uh, increases in, in wages and cost of labor, et cetera, coming into 2021, where that boom period seems to still be carrying across. I think the idea of the drawdown from superannuation, so the federal government allowed people to do, take $10,000 out of their superannuation in the 2019 financial year and also in the 2020 financial year, which gave most families approximately $40,000 in cash to spend. I thought that that was an excellent way to support the economy. Cost didn't really cost the government anything. It's just people taking an advance on their superannuation. And what it really did was it flooded the market with available cash and people spent that money on, on goods. Um, you know, like where my office is, I've got a number of motorcycle shops uh, on that same, same road. And, uh, you know, speaking to a lot of guys owning motorcycle shops and so forth and running those, you could not buy a motorcycle or a jet ski or anything like that. Even places like, you know, electronics, selling electronics did very well through the virus period. A lot of people involved with IT did very well as well because they could work remotely. People that really got hurt during the virus period were in the early onset were certainly bars and restaurants and anything to do with international tourism certainly got hurt. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to have been owning an airline through that time because those, um, those, those sorts of businesses has certainly have been decimated. But everything outside of that has been doing very well. From a property perspective, I don't think anybody could see the gains that actually were made through the 2020 year coming. It was, it was certainly an anomaly because I think a lot of people felt job security was under threat. Um, it was surprising that, that so many people did move property and invest in property through that period. The ideal time to be investing was certainly round about uh, February, March, April in the 2020 year. Because there was a bit of nervousness with vendors, some great deals could be done through that period, and there certainly was, and people made a lot of money um, in the 2020 year if they'd invested through that time. 
what's going to happen in the 2021 year? Well, stay tuned for my hotspots report. That's going to come out in the next few days. We've just been looking at um, our predictions for the 2021 year. But my prediction really from, a, from, a, from an Australia-wide perspective is, is uh, I think Brisbane is once again going to be the standout market. There were certain areas in southeast Queensland that did 25% gains in the 2020 year. I think uh, the markets just outside of Brisbane, I think some of those are going to do very well um, just outside of the CBD and within that middle ring area, they're going to do very well. Um, any area I think that, that um, has a strong demand for property, and so when you're looking at your population growth statistics, has a strong demand from both a population growth perspective and also an investment perspective, and the main thing is it's undersupplied. You've got to make sure that you're going to an, into an area where there's not too much supply onto the market, and it's just a classic case of supply versus demand. You're going to get price increases through those areas. So we'll be releasing our hotspots report in the next week or so, and that will certainly give you a heads up on where to be investing for the 2021 year. So look, it's um, it's good to have 2020 out of the way. It's been a bit of a nightmare in regards to, from a social perspective, everybody's been stuck at home in lockdowns or, or, or having to work from home. So from a social perspective, it hasn't been that great. But for a lot of people from a work perspective and certainly from a property perspective, it's pretty good. Well, we're just about um, into um, the, the period where we go from transition from Christmas into Australia Day. And once Australia Day is out of the way, everybody's really back at work and focused once again. So we're looking forward to getting into that. If anybody would like any advice as to what's happening in the markets at the moment, would like to talk to me about current tax issues or where the best place to be investing at the moment is, please get in touch with the office. We'd love to have a chat with you um, about that. Rents in certain areas are very, very strong at the moment. In certain areas, due to the undersupply, yields are very high. And with a market at the moment that's that's very low interest rates, you know, you're looking at unprecedented historical lows of around just over two percent to borrow. It's amazing, and a lot of property is cash flow positive at the moment. I think 2021 is certainly going to be a, a, a perfect storm when it comes to property investing. Confidence is back. People are realizing that we are not all going to die from this virus. There is a vaccine coming. Interest rates are exceptionally low, yields are high, so I think you're going to see some really good gains for the 2021 year. So don't be one of the ones that miss out on that. Get involved as soon as you can. Give us a call. Stay tuned for the Hotspots Report, and I look forward to chatting with you soon, and let's hope we have a great 2021. Thanks for listening, guys.